Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, pork butt with a twist. Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Welcome to Italy and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. God, that's a good looking piece of meat. And it's a pork butt, also called a pork shoulder. And today, I'm gonna to take a little liberty with this because I am going to do a recipe from the region of Emilia Romagna. And I'm gonna take a little license with what I do with it, but I'm gonna use some of the products that come from Emilia Romagna. So pork is king in Emilia Romagna in many ways for pork sausages, for ragu, for pork roasts, pork cooked in milk. Anyway, so we're going to be working with that pork butt. And if you really want to know where that comes from, it's right here. This region right here, Emilia Romagna. Many people consider this region to be the gastronomic center of Italy because all the food is very rich. This is where your lasagna comes from, your mortadella, your prosciutto di parma, your, your parmesan cheese, the king of cheeses. All of those products come from Emilia Romagna. And speaking of prosciutto di parma, we have some right here. So you know, this is that raw cured ham that comes from that region. It's called prosciutto di parma. Prosciutto means to dry out because this is an air and salt dried ham and it's prosciutto di Parma because it comes from Parma, around the Langerana Hills, where this meat is cured and is air dried. So I'm just gonna take about eight slices of this onto a board, and I'm gonna use this to flavor the pork butt. Now the pork is a, the pork butt is a really kind of tough cut of meat, but we're going to slow cook it in the oven and that's going to make it very, very tender. And this is the kind of roast that gets better even the next day, so you could make this roast ahead of time. So you want to dice up or chop up some prosciutto di parma, make sure it's prosciutto di parma, and then we want to flavor this with a little bit of olive oil. So we need a little onion with this, so we have an onion here that's just sliced into thin slices. So I'm going to put some olive oil in a pan, the same pan that I'm going to cook the roast in. So you want a heavy duty pan. You want something that's, you know, like a, a cast iron pan. So let's put a little bit of olive oil in there. We're using a little extra virgin olive oil just in the bottom of the pan. And all we really want to do is get that prosciutto a little bit crispy. All right, so what are we gonna do with this meat? Well, first of all, we're going to flavor it. So when you get it from the butcher, you wanna make sure it's tied. If it's not tied, you wanna tie it. So I'm working with it on a meat tray because I don't wanna contaminate everything. So once I have done all the clean stuff, like do the onions and the prosciutto, then I can work with the meat. So the meat is tied, tied so that it keeps its shape while it's cooking in the oven. And this is gonna cook at a low heat, about 325 degrees. So we have a mix now of just salt and pepper, but the first thing we wanna do is pat that meat dry. Just pat it dry with some paper towels. 
And when you buy a pork butt like this, you want to make sure that you're getting a nice one, you know, that has a good ratio of meat to fat. This is a very tasty cut of meat because it does have fat. All right, so that's dry enough. And now I use a container like this just to put some fresh ground pepper and salt in a container and just mix that all around with my hands to just to really well combine the salt and the pepper. So use sea salt. You can use coarse sea salt. You can use fresh ground pepper. So now we take this meat off the tray, stick it in there, and just kind of turn it around and massage it in there. And the, the reason I'm using this container is because then it keeps your counter clean and salt and pepper isn't flying everywhere. So you really, really want to give it a good coating of the salt and the pepper. Now this is a roast that I introduced my friends who live in Reggio Emilia to, which is in the region of Emilia Romagna. And my friend Lorenza, who I visit very, very often when I'm in Italy, always cooks a pork roast in milk. That's another way to do it in that region. But today, I'm taking a little bit of liberty with this by making this oven roasted pork butt. All right, that looks good. So now I have to wash my hands before I do the next thing. You always want to make sure that you wash your hands after you deal with raw meat using soap and hot water. Okay, let's see how those onions are doing. So we want to get them to be a somewhat glazed looking. You can see now they're getting a little bit of color. And I knew, did I tell you I was using a Vidalia onion? I like Vidalia onions because they're sweet. And I think they go well with this particular roast. So once they have a little color on them, because they're going to finish cooking in the oven, you can take them out and then we can brown the meat right in the drippings of the pan. And of course, the onions and the prosciutto have already flavored this oil. So now you begin to think about the succulent nature of this particular roast. So I'm going to take these out now, put them on the same plate as the prosciutto. Prosciutto di Parma. Did I tell you that that's a ham that's cured only with salt, thyme, air, and the hind leg of specific pigs that are grown and raised in that area and fed on specific cereal grains so that they are absolutely pristine. There goes the roast. This is the part where you have to have pazienza. Patience, because this is about a four pound roast. Did I tell you that? This is a four pound roast. It's probably going to serve about six to eight people. It's great as leftovers in a sandwich too. But you really have to brown the roast well. So you gotta give it time to get kind of a little crust on one side before you turn it over to the other side. And then you've gotta stand it up on end to make sure that the ends are also nicely brown. So I would say that's gonna take you about 10 minutes. And if the pan seems a bit dry, well, that's when you add just a tad more of extra virgin olive oil. Not too much because there's a lot of fat in this meat. Okay, 10 minutes later, this is gonna be ready for the oven. But while it's browning, guess what? I'm taking a lot of liberty with this recipe as I told you. We're gonna make a balsamic glaze to go over the top. So this is balsamic vinegar. It's not balsamic tradizionale, aceto balsamico tradizionale, which is a whole different thing that also comes from Emilia Romagna. This is just balsamic vinegar that has a little bit of the Trebbiano grape that is used to make balsamic, aceto balsamico tradizionale. But this is just from the grocery store. So you need two cups or a bottle, which is about 17 ounces. So you pour all the vinegar into a pan. And then what I do is add a little bit of honey. So you want, oh, you know, a tablespoon or so of honey. I'm just gonna eyeball this because you know how sticky honey is and I really don't wanna take it out of the jar. So you put in a tablespoon or so of honey. That's exactly a tablespoon. 
and a pinch of salt. Just a little pinch of salt. And you stir this around to just combine everything well. And then on low heat, you let this cook until this balsamic vinegar reduces almost one third less in volume and it becomes very syrupy and it has a sweet taste to it. So that's where I'm taking the license because in Emilia Romagna they really don't do meats that have you know sweet glazes on them but I'm starting to think well you know why don't I so why can't I? I mean I'm a cook why can't I try it? So when I did make it for the first time everybody loved it so I thought I would share it with you. All right, so it's not exactly traditional, it's semi-traditional. All right, so we're gonna let that cook down, okay? All right, nicely browned. Now we're going to add back those flavorings. Here are the onions and the prosciutto. We just put it in around the pan. It's going to flavor the meat beautifully. Just tuck it in wherever you can. Doesn't that sizzle nice? Okay. Beautiful. And now the glaze. So, remember I told you it had to reduce. So here it is. All reduced. Let me show you. See how thick it is? You have no idea how great it is, but I'm telling you. Okay, so we want to put this right over this roast. Brush it on. Woo, that stuff is good. It's got a nice sweet sour flavor. I'm going to put about two-thirds of what I have on the top here <clears throat> and then we're going to cover this and let this cook for about an hour, hour and a half. A roast like this can take anywhere from about two hours, two and a half hours depending on you know the, the uh, weight that you have and the amount that you have. But anyway, we've got the, uh, the glaze on top. Our oven is on at 325 degrees you need to cover the pan. And did I tell you you should do this in a stove top to oven pan? So you just have one pan. And now this thing is a heavy, heavy thing. And it's gonna go right into a 325 degree preheated oven, 325. So it's gonna cook on really low heat. Set the timer. Dinner is in the oven. What goes with a pork butt with balsamic glaze? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. So this is beautiful Swiss chard. You know, in Emilia Romagna, they use a lot of this type of vegetable to make something called erbazzone, which is a, a, an herb and vegetable pie. And I'm going to use it today to make a Swiss chard and potato pie. So this Swiss chard, which by the way, is called Bright Lights, and you can tell why, because look at the color of these stems. So I'm just going to take the leaves off the stem. Now you can, the stems are perfectly usable. You can put them in soup, you could saute them if you wanted to, you could put them in a stir fry. But today I'm only gonna use the leaves and I'm gonna save the stems for something else. So you see how fresh this is? It just has such a nice crisp. And I have to thank my husband Gaetano, who grows all of this, of course, in the Chow Italia garden. 
you want any recipes about Swiss chard, you can go on our website. All right, so we're going to save these for something else. So here is our chard. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, you simply wash it. And then I put it in a saute pan, just like that. No extra water, no nothing else. I put a cover on it. I put it on low heat, and I let these leaves just wilt down. This is better than boiling, because in boiling, what are we doing? We're getting rid of all the vitamins. So this is a much better idea. You could also steam this if you wanted to. So once it's wilted down, I squeeze out all the water, and it looks like this. See? It's all very dry and you want it extremely dry for this pie because you don't want it to be too watery so here it is very very dry with the water all squeezed out so you need about oh a cup a cup and a half so get a big bunch of Swiss chard because it really cooks down to nothing now if you didn't want to use Swiss chard you could use spinach for this dish as well so now that you know that I'm going to take these out of here put them over here and with the chard, we want potatoes. So here we have just two, I like to use the Yukon Gold potatoes. And when I cook potatoes like this, again, I'm not using any water. I'm using the microwave. Yes, folks, one of the few ways that I use the microwave is to heat water and to cook these potatoes. You just stab the potatoes raw, and then you put them in the microwave on, and put them on your baked potato setting until they are cooked. So there they are. And now we're going to add a little bit of pepper. We're going to add some salt, which I have to get. A little salt. We're going to add some nutmeg, a little grinding of nutmeg. I like nutmeg, so I'm going to use a lot. And then you really want to mash these. Now, I wouldn't do this in a food processor because that just makes the potatoes too gummy. I like to use an old-fashioned potato masher like this. And if you've cooked the potatoes well, this should not be very hard to do. So get them soft. And then we can add some warm milk with this. I like the warm milk because it just kind of blends better with the potatoes. So you get them really nice and creamy. So about a three quarters of a cup, I would say, of milk, warm milk. And this is going to be a great accompaniment to that pork roast. And it's a great side dish to have with anything else you want to have. So once you have those potatoes kind of blended, we're going to add some cheese. And here, again, we're sticking with tradition. We're using Parmigiano-Reggiano. Remember, that's the cheese that comes from the region of Emilia-Romagna. And there are only five provinces in where this can be made. Two of them are Reggio and Parma. And there are three others, Bologna, Modena, and Mantua. So in goes the cheese, about a half a cup some butter, get that all mixed around, and I remember my grandmother, my Nona Galasso, making this, but she called it manastapadan, which was a dialect word for potato and spinach pie. Okay, so you could use spinach for this if you wanted to. So now here is our Swiss chard. Put that all in. A nice healthy dish too. I think kids would like this as well. It's good one way to get them to eat their greens. Okay, now we need to fold that all in together. So mix that all well. And whenever I make this, of course, I, I think about all the times I've been in Reggio with my friend Lorenza. And the last time I was there, we went to the museum where the Italian flag was first, was first made. Can you imagine? We went into the museum, saw all the history of the Italian flag made in Reggio Emilia, created there. Okay, now this is looking great, so we need a little bit more butter. I want to give that some nice creaminess, a little butter. And then 
we want butter for our baked dish. So just a regular pie plate, a nine inch pie plate. Put a little butter in there, mix it around. The oven's preheated to 350 degrees. I'll save the rest of that butter for the top. Give that one more good mix. And that's ready for the pan. Okay. So here we go. Get it in there. And let's pat that down. So it's nice and even. It's going to get a nice crust on it as it bakes. And when you eat this, you just scoop it right from the pan. So it's a great side dish. You could even enrich this if you wanted to with other herbs. You could put an egg in with it. You could have a complete meal just in this dish alone. Okay. And then I'm going to put this dab of butter right over the top. And this is ready for the oven. About 35 minutes, I would say. In it goes. And that's how you do Swiss chard pie. Here is our cooked roast. It's all ready. It took about two hours. So remember, it's tied. So you want to take those strings off. And after you take this meat out of the oven, you want to let it rest for a while. So just put like a piece of um, foil over the top. Get those strings out. We use that to hold that roast together so it wouldn't all come apart. But this is going to be just falling apart now because it's just so tender. And it has great flavor. I always say, give me a piece of meat that is tough and I can make it taste better than a filet. And that's the truth. So there are the strings off. Make sure you're using kitchen string when you do that. Oh, I think maybe I have one more right there. Yeah. OK. Take that one off. Delicious. OK. So um, it's so delicious. It's so tender. Mm. It is so flavorful. I can't tell you how good this is. And remember, we gilded the lily by making that balsamic vinegar glaze. You've got to try this. We're all ready to serve this beautiful pork butt. And remember, we flavored it with a sauce made with prosciutto di parma, onions, a little olive oil, and that balsamic glaze. And now it goes right over the meat. It's absolutely delicious. And with this, we made that beautiful Swiss chard pie. Remember, that was Swiss chard and potatoes, some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, butter, milk, a little bit of nutmeg. It's all ready as a wonderful side dish. And here's that balsamic glaze that we made. You'll have to try it. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao.